In this video, we talk about the various methods used to create data frames. All right, so I forgot to mention real quick, you can download this Jupyter file in the description below this video. So if you want to follow along or play, play with it, you can download it, check it out. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it. Now, first things first, I assume you already have Pandas installed on your system. If you don't, I recommend installing Anaconda. I have a link in the description down below if you wanna install Anaconda. Otherwise, you could Google how to install Pandas on your system and you'll need to install NumPy first and then you can get Pandas and then you could get it to work. So anyway, I assume Pandas is on your system and then what we wanna do is go ahead and initialize it. So that's the first thing we do is we import Pandas uh, with this command here, import pandas as pd. Now you could change pd to be something else, but kind of like the standard practice is to use pd. So you, you do that, you can run it, and nothing pops up, but we know pandas has now been initialized and it's running in the background basically, so we can do stuff with pandas. All right, now pandas is broken down into two main functions. There are series in pandas, which I'm gonna cover real quick right now. And then there's also data frames. And the majority of this video and the following videos is gonna be about data frames because that's where like the power lies. And that's where it's kind of like working with Excel and spreadsheets and you have a table and columns and you can filter and sort and all that type of stuff. Whereas a series is more like a dictionary. That's kind of how I think of it. It's a list and you know, you have like, indexes, AKA keys for a dictionary, and then you have values. So anyway, series aren't that significant or anything, but we'll cover them real quick, and then we'll get into the data frames. So the first example I have here is a basic pandas series, and a series is just a one-dimensional labeled array, and you can think of it like a, a one, one column on an Excel spreadsheet. So that's, that's what we have running here. So I have my variable called series is equal to PD. So again, that's referencing pandas here. And then series is the series method. And then I just have a list of numbers here uh, that basically, so basically what this is doing is it's converting this list of numbers into a panda series. And then I'm outputting that series here. So we'll see what we got. And we got this list right here uh, on the left-hand side, zero, one, two, three are our index values. So that, that should kind of sound familiar if you're familiar at all with indexes in Python. It starts at zero. And so each uh, index has a, a value associated with it. So we got zero, we got the 10 in there, one, we got the 20. So, you know, zero, one, two, three. And so that's, that's what we get right here, uh, doing a basic series. Now coming on down here, we're doing another pandas series from a list. It's just this time we've assigned our list as a variable itself. And then we have that variable in our function. So instead of having it typed out right there, we have it as the variable right here. So anyway, we run it real quick. We get what you were hopefully thinking you'd get, you know, your index values and then the value for that particular index. So hopefully that's making some sense. Moving on here, uh, we can define our indexes with the panda series. So that's something that I guess is a little more unique instead of using this, the, the numbered indexes, we can go ahead and specify a different value for our indexes. And this is where I think of dictionaries. So you have keys in dictionaries and then you have values associated with those keys and that's essentially what we're doing here. So we have our, our series and then we have the data in our series. So it's just a list of numbers and then we assign our indexes. And of course we have our values for our indexes and then we run it real quick. And we see that we have our index now is our, our words, our strings. And then we have our values associated with it. So apples 10, oranges six, etc. Now one thing about doing these types of series is you have to have the same number in each uh, list you have. So exam for example, if I put eight right here and I ran it, we'd get an error. So you need to make sure that for every data point you have, you have an index to support that data point and same, same with the indexes. So let's do lemons and run it real quick. And so we have an, is an issue here because we don't have enough data. So I could throw one in here, nine, run it. And now we have 
a, a working Panda series. And so that's pretty much it for the Panda series. Again, I don't see them that often, so uh, there's not much reason to cover them in great detail because the data frames is where, it's, where it's, the super cool stuff is. All right, so our first Panda's data frame example, we're gonna create a data frame from a list. And just to define data frame, it's a two-dimensional tabular structure with rows and columns, AKA a spreadsheet, okay? All right, so we have our list here. So we got fruits and we got apples, bananas, grapes, pears. And then to convert this list into a data frame, we do PD data frame fruits. So instead of PD series, it's PD data frame, right? So that's the function to create a data frame and then we're outputting it here. And just FYI, DF is the like standard uh, protocol for data frame. You could of course call it whatever you want, but DF is typically the default and typically how you want to go. So when we run that, we see that it outputs a table now. So it's nice and pretty. It's kind of color coded and that's thanks to Jupyter. Jupyter makes things a little prettier for us. But we see we have indexes down on the left hand side, zero, one, two, three. And then we got our, our values, our data in our data frame. So apples, bananas, grapes, pears. And you also see that it assigned index to our columns and we're at zero so that's our, our first column uh, if we want to add some more we could do it like this let's see what happens if we run it twice all right so now you see that it basically converted each list into its own row so instead of going vertical like we just saw it is now going horizontal it put each list into its own row so now we got two rows and they contain the same information, but then we have four columns. So zero, one, two, three. So that's kind of cool, right? So hopefully you can see how that kind of takes place and takes hold. Uh, and of course, if we added more lists, let me do one more list just for fun. And you see kind of how your table is built. And of course, we're gonna cover how to filter and sort and do all sorts of stuff with these tables. So that's one way to create a data frame using a list. Another way to create a data frame or data frame data frame is uh, from a list of tuples. So you could create a list and within that list, you could have tuples. And then of course you have information in those tuples. And then to convert it to a data frame, we come on down here. So we got our PDs for pandas and data frame. And then we have our data and we got stock data right here. So that's this variable, so all our list of tuples. And then we're also assigning columns to our data frame. So instead of going with just the index values of zero, one, two, three, we're actually telling it, we want these columns here, date, open, high, low, close, adjust to close, volume. And then we output the data frame. So let's run it real quick. And just like that, we have created a data frame where we have our index, our row indexes going, you know, zero, one, two, but then our column indexes have names and then of course we have the values in here so each tuple basically created a row so that's another way to create a pandas data frame is to have a list of tuples moving on down we can also create a pandas data frame from a dictionary so if you have a dictionary you could convert it to a data frame and this is an example of how to do that so again running with stock data and now we have our keys. So I got date, open, high, low, close, adjusted, close, volume. So basically our columns, you know that we had up here, we had our columns, but if we're importing it as a dictionary, then our keys are our column names. And then we have the data for our columns. So how it works in a dictionary is, you know, vertically. So basically this value aligns with this value, which aligns with this value and this value and so on. So it doesn't create a different row based off of each key and values you have in your dictionary instead it goes vertically. So let's run it real quick and you'll see exactly what I mean. Uh, basically it creates the same exact table that we have up here. It's just another way to do it uh, by using a dictionary to create that data frame. So that's how you can do it. Moving on down here, we're creating a pandas data frame from a dictionary that's containing pandas series. So this is like next level stuff right here. So we have our basic dictionary. So we have our two keys, Nathan and Hillary. And then we have our pandas series 
for each key. So we got pandas series, and then we have our data. So this is the data. And then we have our indexes right here. And same thing with the other key value. And so let's run it real quick and see what pops out the other end. And here we go. So we got our index values down the left-hand side. So apples, oranges, grapes, kiwis, etc. And then we also have the values associated with those particular index indexes. And if you notice, it was smart enough to notice that we had the same index value uh, in multiple locations. So right here in the Nathan key, we had apples. And we also had apples down here in the Hillary key. Now they're in different places in the index list here, but it knew that apples equals apples and it knew to put those values in the right spot. So it put a 10 for Nathan and an 11 for Hillary and so on. And then uh, moving on down, we got bananas instead of bananas. Uh, there's none in the Nathan Panda data series, right? There's no bananas here. Uh, so we got a non, not a number, whereas Hillary has six. And then grapes, Nathan has five, Hillary has non, so not a number, none, basically. And moving on down to oranges, we both have oranges in our list, so six and three, and we got six oranges and three oranges. And Pandas was smart enough to connect those two index values together. And of course, hopefully you noticed that the keys of our dictionary were used as our, our column headers. So basically just like up here, we had the keys, created the column headers, same concept over here. It's just using the Pandas series, we were able to uh, define our own indexes instead of it being zero, one, two, three, et cetera. So that is another way to create a pandas data frame, again, using a dictionary containing pandas series. So high speed stuff. All right, another way to create a pandas data frame is from a CSV file. So to do that, you just do pd.read underscore CSV and then link to the file, run it real quick and boom, just like that we have imported our CSV and we could go ahead and do all sorts of stuff with it, which we're gonna do later on. And as a side note, you can also import Excel files, databases, etc. So you can do all sorts of ways to import data into a data frame to manipulate it. So I just wanna point that out real quick. Now a few other very basic common commands used with your data frame. And the first option here is to get a list of indexes. So we got df.index, and of course df is representative of our data frame up here where we signed it. So df.index gets us a list of our indexes. And so we got zero through 252, step one. So if you're familiar with the range function at all, this should hopefully look familiar. Alternatively, if our indexes have values or strings associated with them. So let me come up here and run this one real quick. And then I'll come down here and run this one. And now you see that it gives us our index values. So we got apples, bananas, grapes, kiwis, lemons, oranges, uh, instead of the numbers. So if we have assigned our indexes, it'll be smart enough to output the ones we assign. Whereas if it's just numbers, it'll give us the numbers. So let me rerun this one. And then, oh, and as a side note, this file is in the description below this video. So if you want it and you want to follow along or play, play around with it, you could go ahead, download it and, and do that. All right, moving on. You could also get a list of columns. So here's all of our columns. So date, open, high, low, close, adjusted, close. So just like that, list of columns. The next one is values. So this outputs all the values that we have in our data frame. And so that, that could be kind of messy looking, but maybe there's a reason to have that. I don't know. Um, I just wanted to show you that this option exists. And then we have shape. So we get the size of our data frame. So 252 rows by seven columns is the shape. And we could use this. I've seen it used several times to basically assign it or um, assign a rows and columns variables. So we're doing that here. And let me run it. So you got rows, 252, column seven. And then of course you can use these rows and columns variables elsewhere in your code if that's handy. 
And so that's it for this video. I wanted to show you a few different ways that you could generate data frames. And we covered, you know, using lists, dictionaries, importing a CSV, using tuples and pandas series and so on. So in the follow on videos, we'll get into sorting our information, filtering it, etc., and we'll cover a lot more stuff. All right, anyway, if you found this video helpful in any way, shape, or form, I appreciate any sorts of likes, comments, subscribes, anything like that, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day.